the small car venture would you see it in conjunction with something like this because we've got mixed signals from you in the past about the small car is it just a Renault thing that you're making is it something that you're going to be putting your name to now mm -hmm. with the name not being part of your product uh, you know uh, I, I how are you going to position that the problem is not with my signal you got to check your antenna <laughs> but uh, okay that's a fair fair point uh -huh. what I'd say is this that there's again the product issue and the brand issue you know so let's say the back end issue and the front end issue the back end there's no problem um, in fact we reviewed the the development this morning uh, and again whether in terms of appearance performance or cost that products in place i i love the way it looks we said we will not make a four wheeler unless it can deliver at least 30 kilometers a liter that's been done our engineers have achieved that so we are very proud of that and we also said that we are not going to put a product in the marketplace unless it has the potential to deliver 20% plus EBITDA. That's done as well. So we know we've got that equation right. That stool is stable on those three legs now. So the product is done. However, uh, now comes the brand issue. You know? And this is not an issue that I can uh, quite frankly speak about uh, uh, unilaterally because uh, this is something that uh, has to be discussed with Renault and Nissan. Um, I, I come from the uh, principle that uh, it is the brand that will succeed in the end and not the product. In the end, the product can be copied, can be improved, uh, etc. And what should be the brand strategy is at least as important and as critical uh, as the product and its appearance and performance itself. Is it going to be a Renault? Is it going to be Nissan? Uh, is it going to be a new brand? Um, and this is something that Renault Nissan have to decide because how much say do you have in that what is your role going to be are you only a, a builder of it or are you also going to have you know some stake in the branding of it uh, quite honestly the answer is both because we will uh, we will OEM this product to Renault Nissan and as Mr. Gohan and I announced in November 2009 it will be finally up to Renault and Nissan to decide how they want to brand it, which will automatically decide how they will distribute it. Uh, you know, if it's a new brand, it needs a new distribution. If it's an existing brand, it will go into existing network. So they will decide that. Now, that doesn't mean that of this platform, as we call it, this will be the only product that will be made and supplied. Uh, because that wouldn't make sense, uh, because we are not here to be a contract manufacturer to someone. There is, there is nothing that stops us from spinning out other products from the same platform um, and, and that's what we will be doing. Uh, the platform has been designed very intelligently to yield both three-wheeled products and four-wheeled products. So at the very least, we will leverage the same platform to make and to offer to the marketplace a new generation of three-wheelers, uh, hopefully to one day completely replace the stuff we make today, which I would quite candidly say is quite outdated. Uh, we've been rather preoccupied getting our act together on motorcycles. We haven't done justice to the three-wheeler, which is also a very important brand in our portfolio. Uh, so once this platform is available from the middle of next year, middle of 2012, uh, then we have the opportunity to offer the marketplace a really new generation of three-wheeler, which is so much nicer to look at, uh, so much more environmentally friendly, and also so much more comfortable and safe. I mean, today it's a, a criticism of the three-wheeler that it looks ugly, uh, it's polluting, uh, and it doesn't feel very comfortable or safe. Now, while all of this may not be true, in the end, perception is reality. So, we want to overcome that with this. You spoke about the three-wheeler plan, but what about using that platform for your small car? How do you see that evolve? We can, uh, but right now, we, we have two options already. Uh, we have a four-wheeler option with our partners. We have a three-wheeler option for ourselves. Uh, so I think uh, we must first cross those two bridges. So when it comes to three-wheelers, we have a uh, very uh, enviable position as being the world's largest uh, three-wheeler maker. Uh, and it's no secret that uh, being a niche market, uh, this is an extremely uh, uh, profitable product for us you know, with very high EBITDAs. And I can tell you the, the EBITDAs in this segment is, is over 30%. Uh, but uh, 
at the same time there is really no barrier to entry uh, in every district of up there is a three wheeler maker you know it's almost like a small scale industry it must be the only uh, business model in the world which on the one hand is virtually small scale like in terms of its skill sets but has the cost structure uh, of the it <laughs> industry you know uh, so it's I very so yeah so it's very weird um, uh, and this this is a problem because as you can imagine if uh, the barrier to entry is so low uh, then strategically we are vulnerable uh, because a lot of competition tomorrow can theoretically commoditize the industry so we have to raise the bar and the only way to raise the bar is with technology uh, so unless we present a three wheeler which is just two generations ahead of everything everyone is doing right now um, uh, we we would not be able to maintain this uh, uh, this cash cow let's say uh, in in the kind of health that it is today okay let's look at the road ahead what's the kind of lineup that you have in terms of new launches no i mean uh, from our point of view there's only uh, in uh, see we, we are in the uh, volume space we are not uh, in the niche space in the volume space to our mind there are only three kinds of motorcycles really sit up and bike position is the commuter motorcycle where we compete with the discover uh, the lean forward is the sports motorcycle where we have the pulsar uh, and the sit back and relax is the cruiser space where we have the avenger so i think for the three categories uh, we already have these three brands now it's up to us how we develop these brands forward again on the three levers that i mentioned earlier in terms of design in terms of performance in terms of price so quite frankly uh, uh, i don't hesitate to say this uh, the way we would meet uh, uh, the the honda in the marketplace would be a two pronged approach two pronged uh, brand approach one uh, we would take the pulsar forward um, and because it comes from a platform uh, it will have certain advantages that i'm pretty sure the honda bike will not have uh, and on the other hand we will flank it at the other end uh, with the ktm Uh, which i don't refer to as our brand because it's a independent brand but as you know it's a company in which bajaj has almost 40% share um, and we will introduce uh, ktms into this marketplace uh, later this year uh, so i think uh, the the way to deal with this kind of a challenge is certainly not to take it head on uh, uh, but to to flank it and with the pulsar and the ktm i think we can do that what plans around ktm do you plan to own more of it well over the last 3 years uh, we moved up from 0 to 40 um as of now the ceiling we have set for ourselves is 49 um and at every opportunity that comes by there's not much of a free float now but every time there's an opportunity uh, we will move up or creep up let's say to 49 last question uh, the word hero hasn't come into a conversation as yet and the fact is that they do own a large chunk of the market does that mean that you're not worried about them You know Mark Twain said I have been through many terrible things in my life some of which actually happened so uh, <clears throat> uh right now as i see hero um my understanding of hero is that they have a extremely strong position uh, if i may say so in the value for money space in the fuel efficient reliable motorcycling space and uh, on any day i would grant that to them i'm not competing for that space uh, i think bajaj has enough headroom for growth in the domestic as well as the international markets without having to take anything out of that space directly indirectly we can do it by creating an aspiration for consumers who are in that space to actually step out uh, cross the lakshman rekha and come over into our space so i think we can wean them away uh without having to to bludgeon uh, uh, ourselves against a competitor um in our space that we like to call as the bigger and sporty motorcycle space uh so far hero has not been able to challenge us but I, but i repeat so far uh anything is possible in the future uh but i think we are a little ahead of that game i'm sure you'll keep your margin intact and be ahead of the race thank you so much rajiv for joining us today really enjoyed it